Howdy folks, welcome back to Moondockery. You know there are some times where it just feels absolutely fantastic to take a load off. And today's video is going to focus on just that, taking a load off. And it's going to be centered around camp furniture. And specifically, I'm going to be introducing all of you to two new acquisitions I've made in the form of one Tigris camp chairs. Now when you're on the trail, you need to take five. You just pop a squat wherever. Hopefully something's elevated and dry to where you, know, you can sit fairly comfortable, like this trusty boulder. However, when you get to camp, sometimes your weather conditions aren't favorable or the terrain and location is not favorable for you to actually sit down. When you're hiking, you're exerting yourself all day long, being able to sit comfortably and to actually allow your body to rest is incredibly important. It's not just important for your body, it's important for your psyche. Now, when I was younger, much, much younger than I am now, it really wasn't too difficult for me to be able to get comfortable anywhere. When I was in the Army, we were on a, a, a march, a recon. I would take my helmet off, turn it upside down, and sit on my helmet. And when we were uh, taking a break long enough for me to actually take my pack off to rest a little bit, I'd just sit on my pack. Any other time, any spot of ground <laughs> that was dry. Sometimes it didn't even have to be dry, I was so tired. That's where I sat, that's where I laid, that's where I rested, and that's where I got up from and carried on with the mission. As I've gotten older, I've realized I can't do that anymore. Going down to the ground means that I have to get back up again. And oftentimes it's just a whole lot easier for me to stand and rest than try to get down. Since I developed arthritis in my knees and in my hips, that's a real chore to do that. So I have learned the importance of being able to take along camp furniture. Some camp furniture can actually be field expedient from things that you normally take along with you anyway. Like a sleeping mat you have strapped underneath your uh, rucksack or even one of these fancy dancy little lightweight beauties right here both of which can be used for field expedient comfort now a sleep mat just like my old army iso mat that can be used in a couple different ways one of which is very simple and believe it or not this is actually fairly comfortable now these lightweight uh, folding mats they aren't nearly as resilient as my old army ISO mat. You can't do the, uh, the same technique with those. However, you can unfold this. And if you're spry enough to be able to sit down at the base of a tree, you can turn this into a very comfortable seat. Other than having to get back up off the ground, this is very comfortable. You, I, from where I double layered the bottom, it's good and thick. My bottom <laughs> is not getting any of the roots or any of the rocks surrounding the trees. And just one thin layer of that sleep mat protects my back from the rough texture of the bark of this tree. Now I can use my old army ISO mat in exactly the same way as I did the folding mat. However, since this is rounded, it wants to go ahead and go right back to its rounded shape. It takes a little finagling. And the uh, folding mat is just a whole lot easier for you to be able to fold into the configuration you want. This one will provide you some comfort, but it's just not as easy as the folding mat. 
Now personally, my first experience with modern camp furniture actually happened when I went out to Colorado with a group of my friends to go hiking in the Cheyenne Mountain Range. And before we went up, all of us picked up a few extra things at the local REI. And one of the things we all picked up was a little portable camp chair. And uh, super lightweight, very compact, and it really did provide a good bit of comfort while we were set up in camp. Let me show you how it sets up. Now this is one high-tech piece of machinery. Right there it is. That is it. Simple tripod, simple triangular webbing, or uh, nylon for the seat. Well, it might be simple, but comfort? Oh. On today's standards, <laughs> this is just shy of a suppository. But over 10 years ago, when I made that trip into the Cheyenne Mountain Range, this was just fine. And um, due to its triangular nature, um, men have a particular challenge <laughs> with this particular style of chair after sitting in it for a while. But for short term, it's pretty good and definitely for lightweight. If you're, you're young, you're fit, no arthritis, you'll be good to go. None whatsoever. However, this puts my knees at a level to where oh, it's just a little low. Now, three years ago, I received this in a white elephant exchange at one of our Christmas get-togethers. I took this on my Dolly Sods adventure and this really <laughs> paid for its weight for me carrying it, which it's not particularly heavy, but it's not particularly light either. But it's, uh, the, it definitely paid for its weight and bulk having it on Dolly Sods because that hike kicked my hind end. It was uh, extremely strenuous. But to be able to sit in a chair in the evening before I got in my hammock, this really was a godsend. Now this is essentially a knockoff of the Helinox design, which is a really good design. Uh, however, if you've ever priced Helinox chairs, uh, they were very, very expensive. A chair comparable to this is about $150. And this one just happened to be pseudo camouflaged and that, you know, the front's camouflage, but the back is not. And I believe the early Helinox uh, camouflage chairs had the same thing going. You pay, had to pay a good bit extra to get multicam as opposed to one of their solid colors, but you had a very light back. This one I modified by putting racquetballs on the ends of the feet simply because <laughs> they would sink in the dirt if you did not. It literally goes together in seconds and when I'm not trying to handle other things and film it goes together much faster and much easier. This is the basic frame, this is the basic seat, I'll show you how it goes together. Now in order to keep track of the little uh, carrying bag I just loosen one of those, pull it over, drop it down, put that back into position. That way I keep track of the little bag and you can actually use that for storage for things like your water bottle. This one here, uh, it has a short section and a long section. Uh, the short section is the seat, long section is the back. There's small little nylon pockets, which these are very heavy duty. I was very impressed with the quality of this being a knockoff. I wasn't expecting that. And you just slide the poles right into position in those little pockets. Do the same thing with the back. And you have a fully assembled camp chair. As far as comfort factor goes, 
this is actually very very comfortable the only drawback for me is that the seat stretches uh, your bottom goes down a good little bit once you uh, settle in the chair so there's the whole thing about getting out of the chair and because of my arthritis it hurts my knees a little bit but for the comfort that I get from being able to take a load off and relax and like I said this is a comfortable chair I just make certain that I'm not getting up and sitting down getting up and sitting down a lot I make use of my comfort time and make certain I get all my chores done that I need to get done before I sit down so that way I have more comfort time and less pain time getting out of it but as far as getting out just put your hands on either side lift there we go oh there are all kinds of camp furniture and one of which comes in the form of a large piece of nylon that pretty much sets up like a hammock you sling it under a tripod now the design of this is very simple it's just a very large rectangle with a loop it drapes around on itself and it's sewn very sturdily in position so you have little passageways through the top and through the bottom through the top a piece of 550 cord to tie up to the tripod on the bottom a big enough area to run uh, a piece of straight deadfall or a sapling through at the base of your uh, tripod you can actually I've, I've got it configured to where uh, this uh, piece of wood is removable you very easily could do it on uh, the tripod uh, bottom pole if you want to leave it there long term and simply use the tripod move yourself into position and again another very comfortable camp chair and the nice thing about this is this is a multi tool I've used this I've run uh, sticks through either end tied with a piece of 550 cord for handles and I've loaded this thing up with firewood and have either dragged it across the ground because it's heavy-duty Kador nylon or I've picked up the two pieces of 550 cord used as handles and was able to carry it like a piece of luggage so this is like a multi tool that's also a really awesome and very comfortable camp chair now if by any chance you happen to watch my annual central ohio bushcraft gathering video when i set up my camp i was particularly excited about this this was like my first camp table this was awesome it's lightweight and it folds up very compactly however this is nothing that you would want <laughs> to take in the woods i guess in a way you could probably find a way to make a backpack frame out of this and that way when you're at camp you can actually take your backpack frame off and turn it into a table now this was fantastic for what it was designed for and um, being very close to my Jeep, this was absolutely fantastic to have an elevated platform for I could do my cooking, my preparations, things like that, uh, set my coffee on in the morning, uh, eat from. It was just very, very convenient. But for backpacking, no. Ha -ha. Nope. Now, this on the other hand, was a ten dollar purchase from the amazons and um it's from a company called blue which uh this really bothers me to have a white logo on a piece of camouflage fabric okay pet peeve but anyway this is a camp table i'm gonna go ahead and set it up and let you check it out this goes together basically exactly the same as the bottom section of the camp chair that I showed you earlier. Comes with a couple other parts. And again, a camouflage camp table should not have bright red, <laughs> um, any parts, bright red. Now, there's little recesses here that just clip into position on these little end pieces here.
and they, they're stretched out just a little bit but that's only because the top's not on it yet get those into position and the top is pretty cool because on both ends there's little pockets little mesh pockets you can put things in go ahead and put this one here just snap that into place this back and it is nice and taut when you get things snapped into position and there you go and you can also go ahead and there's a couple loops in here to where you can suspend this on either side and actually this is I, I, I tried it out uh, put my uh, coffee cup on there it's as long as you have level ground this is pretty nice and again a white logo on something's camouflage is idiotic blue you need to go back to school I'm certain a graphic designer designed this and they know better listen to them but this is a great little table uh, it has reinforcements through here to keep it taut we have the little bars that's underneath but for the price couldn't beat it could not beat it and to be able to have something very small very compact that I can uh, pack along with me to have a platform to be able to uh, work on my camera equipment change things over um, to prep meals and things like that Ju just from being able to do the YouTube thing this is definitely um, phenomenal to be able to have something that I can do demonstrations and things on without it having to be in the dirt. Now to the focus of this video which are two of one tigress's folding camp chairs. I own a one tigress um, backwoods bungalow and a smoky hut tent. Both of them are tents. Both of them are okay. They're, they're, they're decent, but one of the things that really bothered me a lot about their products that I had experience with was the fact that their logo was huge, astronomically huge. You're walking through the woods and you know both of them are coyote brown and you're walking through the woods, you don't really see anything, but because they use black ink on that uh, coyote brown, it just stands out like a billboard for one tigress. And I was not impressed with that. Uh, my son bought a one tigress multi-cam hammock for his son. And um, it was multi-cam-esque at best. It was not <laughs> what I would call multi-cam. So I had a few thoughts of ordering one of these chairs in the past and when I saw the hammock no I, I knew I, I wasn't going to waste my time or money uh, purchasing the camp chairs well I happened to run across a very very good sale on these things and um, I was looking at all the pictures looking at all the pictures all of them looked legit multicam so I messaged the uh, seller and the seller said yes they are multicam and by looking at the packaging that these things come in there is a small tag I don't even see a tag on the smaller one but on the larger one there's a very small tag that says one tigress and that's it as far as their advertising and labeling goes on these I'm going to go ahead and break these out, pull you in closer to see some of the details before I set them up because I was very, very impressed with the quality of these camp chairs. The first thing I noticed was the quality of the storage case. Very well made. Uh, the stitching is exceptional. This is military grade stitching. This is what I would expect to see on a military backpack. And the zippers, I mean, I'm a real stickler for zippers. They're okay. I'm not going to lie, they're okay. Looking at the powder coating 
that's on all the metal parts was impressive. Uh, the gauge of the metal that they're using for these is far more substantial than my other folding camp chair that I took the dolly sods with me. They have attached to one of the legs a Velcro strap to hold everything together. That was another pretty impressive thing. Now, when I'm looking at this, I see uh, multicam. It looks, it looks a little pale, but I see multicam. This would be okay in the woods. However, that is the back of the camp chair. The fabric is very heavy duty. And I'm gonna put all this, uh, the specs on both the chairs in the descriptions. But I'm just gonna give, give you a quick walkthrough on these. Now, the other thing that impressed me were the connection points. Now these connection points are very well made. They're very heavy duty. They're very robust. The stitching is exceptional on these. And it's all the way around. The stitching all the way around this, I, I, I went over it with a fine tooth comb and it's good. It's very good. And they add nice little features like side pockets on the chair. I'll show you a little bit more about those in just a moment once I have them set up. But all the way around, I was impressed with the quality before I even set them up. Now, the other chair is a larger chair and the gauge of the metal, the diameter of the legs and all of the pieces are actually larger for the larger chair. So if by any chance you happen to be a particularly robust individual um, and you're concerned about the stability of this, which <laughs> this is very well made, uh, you may consider checking out the larger chair, which has much more substantial framework on it. I'm gonna go ahead and set them up and let you check them out. These are the chairs set up. They go together exactly like the other folding camp chair that I showed you earlier. The one caveat with that is, is that the frames on these are much more sturdy, much more rigid, which makes the chairs very, very tight. Very tight, tight like a toyga, very tight. And so you really have to work a little bit more to get these things um, in their little um, pockets to get them uh, situated. This camp chair, and this one as well, have two pockets. And they have a little bit of a give to them, and they're sufficient enough for you to be able to put um, small things in, um, a fire kit, something like that, something you need to uh, grab, uh, ready access, things like that. Uh, it could even uh, facilitate a small, like a 16 ounce water bottle. Uh, with no problem whatsoever. And it's just nice, neat, and convenient uh, just on either side. Now, this particular top is soft all the way around, whereas the high back chair, it's actually rigid at the top. There's a bar that goes through here. Whereas this chair, it doesn't really matter whether you put the bottom portion of the frame on first or the top. With this one here, there's very, very deep channels that the frame has to go through in order to seat properly. So you have to put these on first. Now, I'm gonna bring these in a little closer so you can actually see the difference in the size of the frame. Now, this is the uh, frame leg for the small camp chair, and this is for the high back. There is a significant difference in those. Uh, one is if it's if it's not twice the diameter, oh, it, it's it's at least three fourths. So that that is really significant. And um, the frames themselves are very sturdy, but with the robust nature of the high back uh, chair, it's uh, much much more sturdy than a smaller one. Now the most important uh, consideration is the comfort factor. The smaller chair, 
uh, sits a little higher than the other folding camp chair I have, so it's easier to sit into. And with it, I actually feel the flex of the frame of the chair. This one, I don't feel it like that. Uh, it's, it's much tighter. Uh, the frame feels much more sturdy and it's very comfortable. The high back chair, it's a different kind of comfort. I, 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 I can really kick back in this. I, 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 I could take a nap in this with no problem whatsoever. And the rigid bar that's at the top, it's not an issue. I, I, I hardly notice it. But the nice thing about that is when you want to lean back and relax, you could, you could roll up a, a fleece jacket, something like that, stick it back there, and it would almost be like a perfect neck rest, something you might want to uh, purchase for a, a flight, a long distance flight to keep your neck supported. You know, just put it right back there and you have the same degree of comfort and uh, very comfortable. Uh, I like both of them very well. But I think as far as just for general camp purposes, I'll probably wind up using the smaller one uh, much more often uh, than the larger one, uh, just for ease of packing and stuff. This one packs a little bit larger, not a whole lot, but depending on where I'm going, what I'm doing, I may wind up taking this you know, out with me a, a good little bit. But this one will probably go with me just about all the time. Now I mentioned, the fact that the backing of these are still camouflaged. That is just a little bit lighter, just a little little tint lighter than the front. But at a distance, that's not going to stand out like my other camouflage camp chair. The other thing with all of the stuff I've showed you today, all of the frames, all of the frames uh, on my folding camp table, uh, both my chairs, these are going to get spray painted. Uh, I don't like the black. I'm going to go ahead and uh, spray them up, pseudo camouflage. Who knows? I, I may even get you know a little bit of extra energy, a little little bit of extra creativity, and I might even turn these into multicam frames. And uh, as far as the the feet go, uh, I'm not going to do the racquetball uh, feet like I did with the other one. Uh, racket balls turned out to be brittle and they started breaking so I had to wrap electrical tape around them. So I'm going to get some tennis balls and drill the holes in them and do the same thing. But with the outer coating of the tennis balls, it's going to hold that together. So I'm not going to worry so much about the, the tennis balls cracking and tearing apart. The other thing I can do with the tennis balls is you're thinking, John, you're, you're an absolute fanatic about the camo. They don't make camouflage tennis balls. Got you covered. You can use uh, synthetic fabric dyes to dye the tennis balls. Yeah, yeah. Brown, green, what have you. So I'll, I'll be doing that with the tennis balls to uh, camouflage those a little bit as well. Now, one tigress makes both of these chairs um, in multiple colors. And uh, I think it was black, there's Coyote Brown, uh, there might be Olive Jab, I'm not certain on that, and then they make the multicam. And um, at one time, they had a folding camp table that I really wanted. And it was very similar to the one I showed you, but it had more bells and whistles. And uh, it definitely was not 10 bucks. I think it was the neighborhood of like uh, $50, $60 and, uh, on their website, but it disappeared. It disappeared. I haven't seen it in well over a year, maybe, maybe even a year and a half to two years. But uh, if they come back out with one of those and it's made to the quality as these chairs and the multicam fabric is as accurate as these are, I'm going to be very, very tempted to pick that up. I believe the dimensions were just a little bit larger all the way around uh, in comparison to the uh, camp table that I bought. It's a little bit taller, the dimensions are a little wider, and they actually had a roll-up 
uh, tool uh, organizer that clipped onto the side so you could put things in it. Like if you're going to use that for your cook station, you could use that to put your, uh, your, your cookware, things like that in there. Um, a little flashlight, uh, you know, what, what have you, anything, a ferro rod, all kinds of things. And uh, the little uh, caddy was about as long as the table. And then it also had end pockets, just like the one that I was able to get on Amazon for 10 bucks. And, um, but I think, hopefully, one tigress has started listening to their consumers because the, some of the complaints that I, I had with them and things I've seen, things like that, uh, my own personal experiences, I'm not seeing any of those issues with these products. Um, now, Helinox was the original designer of these chairs. These, these are a straight knockoff of those. Uh, there, there's no denying that. And uh, even, even this high back chair was a Helinox design. Helinox camp chairs, their, their, their camp cot, uh, their, their camp table, all their folding camp anything is astronomically expensive. Definitely well over twice the price of these. And um, I'll, I'll uh, make sure I put uh, one tigress's um, link in there so you can see what the retail price is on these. Uh, I got them at a, a very good price, I believe. And um, I, th I think they're a fantastic deal. Now, this is by no means a review. This is just my first impressions, sharing them with you, and just talking about the comfort factor of camp uh, furniture. And uh, but I will be using both of these a good bit, probably be using the small one a good bit more uh, throughout the next summer and things like that. I get a good um, you know, five, six months of use out of these, and uh, I think I'll be ready to do a good, honest review of them. And a couple uh, modifications I want to do to them, like I'm going to paint the frame, I'm going to uh, get some tennis balls and make some uh, feet to go over the uh, feet of the frames, things like that. Uh, I really like the addition of this. Uh, if you have a, a few things you want to have at the ready, your headlamp, uh, a camera, you know, and anything you want to have at the ready that's going to be around the campfire or whatever, you don't want to have to get back up, go to your backpack, go to your shelter, go to your tent, go to your kayak, go to your canoe, anything else. You can just put those things that you want to grab at, at the ready and just put them in this pouch because that's a fairly decent size uh, pouch uh, once the uh, camp chair is out of it. So you could actually put a lot of at the ready items in that pouch and uh, have those with you whenever you need them. Um, I'm very impressed and uh, I really am looking forward to getting these out in the woods and actually enjoying them on solo overnighters, um, overnighters with my friends. That's another nice thing. Since I have two of them, I can hook up one of my buddies that may not have a, a chair, give it to them and let them carry it out so they have a camp chair as well when I go out uh, camping with them. Well, folks, I, I had a, a great day at work and um, I saw an opportunity to be able to come out and uh, shoot a video. The weather is absolutely amazing. It's, it was 78 degrees today. Yesterday, the high, and it was only <laughs> there for, oh, a very brief amount of time, very brief, may, maybe 45 minutes. It was 58 yesterday. Um, this morning's uh, temperature was 52, and uh, so the weather was fantastic. Great day at work. Um, Warping the minds of, oh, excuse me, not warping the minds, molding the minds of America, future minds of America. And uh, I've just really enjoyed being out in the woods, sharing a little bit of uh, information with you, talking a little bit about uh, comfort factor out in the woods and just being in the woods. Well, folks, I, I, I've enjoyed this. I appreciate so much you watching, and I... We'll see you next time.